Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, welcome back to another Fix Your Form episode where I take your form and I give you guys free coaching. Some critique if you want to get involved, we need three reps, 70% landscape sent to askmikke at gmail.com, askmikke at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let's dig into it. First, like we got some squats coming up. Focused, making sure that hand placement is symmetrical and correct. I like it. Shout out to Relentless Fitness in the background. I see you. I see you. Nice, calm, cool, collected warm up. Let's see what my man's got. Shout out to the guy in the background doing absolutely nothing on that foam roller. I'm sure your workout went great after that. I pr- appreciate if you'd hop on the assault bike, actually warm up, and then get to your squats. All right. Overall, looks really, really clean, man. Looks really, really clean. Uh, one thing I'd like to see, once your form uh, f- feels pretty good, consistent, and confident, which your form is pretty good, I'd like to see it be a little bit more aggressive getting into the hole. Try to get some of that rebound, some of that elasticity, some of that stretch effect from your muscles out of the hole, um, and it'll allow you to be a little bit more explosive on the way up. The control is absolutely perfect, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. Uh, but I think if you could be a little bit more aggressive over time, oh, Blair Witch Project, if you could be a little bit more aggressive over time, uh, you'll be able to not only uh, lift a little bit more weight, uh, but train with a little bit more volume because you'll be able to handle uh, heavier loads with more reps at the same time. Staying really, really upright, a nice high bar position. We're not going to tell you to change it because your torso – in femur length, everything looks clean. The bar is staying over your midfoot. It looks like you're nice and tight. Uh, not sure where, if you're using a belt or not, but that bit may be another good step for you as well um, as you progress into this powerlifting or squatting thing. Um, knee sleeves are also a great option. I don't think they're necessary. Uh, I would definitely get a belt first, but I do think they're great tools um, to allow you to, again, train a little bit heavier. Uh, and people would say, well, if you are only training a little bit heavier, because of those things, that's not really the case. The case is they allow you mentally to feel a little bit safer, uh, keep some warmth in your knees, also a slight compression. And same with the belt, studies show that you are allowed to flex your midsection a little bit more. Your ab muscles are actually working harder with the belt when they have something to press against when breathing and bracing properly. Plus, you're allowed to use more load, which overloads the muscles. You know, if you can do beltless, uh, uh, knee sleeveless, you know, three by five at 300 pounds, but then you could do 315 or 320 over time with knee sleeves and a belt. Your muscles are handling a heavier load, uh, and not only for strength, but hypertrophy, they'll help a little bit better. Um, this angle, uh, still, I believe it's the same, a uh, gentleman's. It looks really, really good. Uh, one thing you might be able to do is move that stance in just a hair. It looks like you're really struggling to find stability in the knee, and sometimes moving the stance in uh, allows that to be a little bit easier for you. Um, but again, all I would suggest really uh, is to perhaps try a belt and then work on being a little bit more aggressive in to the hole, catching some of that rebound and banging back out. Let's see what we got next, ladies and gentlemen. Blair Witch again. Oh, we're going slow mo. Just kidding. Um, what I do like about being controlled, you know, I often say be quick but don't hurry, uh, which is a John Wooden quote, uh, one of the greatest coaches across all sports of all time is that you want to be fast enough for you um and maybe you know this guy obviously is the first time i'm seeing him lift i've never talked to him maybe this is as fast as he's comfortable or can do under control in which case um maybe this is just how you're gonna have to squat but i do think once you gain control the proprioception the body awareness the technique the skill of squatting and you're fairly efficient no one's going to be fully efficient or perfect every set, every rep ever, but once you're pretty confident and built into the routine of it, then we can start on working on pacing, which I often talk a lot about in the squat. The pacing of the squat itself can help so much. Um, How fast you can go on the way down oftentimes uh, is representative of how fast you can go on the way up and uh, overall how aggressive you can be can help you lift more weight. And again, whether your goal is hypertrophy or powerlifting, um, the more weight you can lift, you're going to be better off with both because the more volume you'll be able to handle um, and then if the more efficient you are not only with the pacing but your form itself the more frequency you'll be able to handle at heavier loads and those are as we should know by now class the most efficient way or excuse me not the most efficient but the uh, most important factors 
the most prominent factors in both strength and muscles gained. Um, we saw this guy enough. Let's see what we can get into. We'll get into the next one. Good re-rack, my man. Overall, really, really good squat. Thanks for sending it in and building some content with me. Got a little conventional pulls going on. Let's see what we got. Overall, I'd say really, really solid. Um, positioning of the hips looks good. Back looks good. Even your lats look pretty flexed. You're moving that neck a little bit, which isn't too bad. Try to keep it locked in. On your very first rep, I would just suggest trying to find a little bit of tightness before you yank on the bar. Right now, you can even see is your elbows are a hair bent, and then you just kind of go from zero to 100 on that. So what I would try to do without pulling your hips down is I would try to sit back a little bit more, get a little bit of body weight behind the barbell, shoulders just a hair further back over your wrists, and then from there, there should be tension in your arms. Almost think about flexing your tricep. There should be full tension in your arms and full tension in your hamstrings and then pull from there overall really really solid back into the squats my man first couple things uh just that really pop out are the moving of your feet and moving of your hand we want to get as tight as we can through everything so we want our full foot in contact with the ground we want to balance as well as we can we want to squeeze that barbell as tight as we can with both hands because if we do that we're more likely to squeeze our back the entire time and then next uh you know we're going to talk again about pacing maybe you're trying to do pause squats uh if that's the case i guess that's fine but even still it's just inconsistent with the amount of pause you're doing in terms of time and you're losing tension in the pause which is something we want to work on we we want to pause in the squat to make it more difficult so that we can get stronger and be better in our competition style squat we don't want to pause in the squat to lose tension and then pop back on we want to emulate our normal squat so for you we really got to focus on getting tight, both in our stomach, back, hands, and really feeling the ground with our feet. Number two uh, for yourself is I would actually skip the pause squats for now. You can come back to them later, but those are more a variation of the of the of the competition lift or a variation of the main lift. And what we want to do is get really good at the normal lift before we start to need or add in variation. Once you're proficient in the squat and you've maybe plateaued the pause squat, tempo squat, pin squat, these other exercises, front squat, high bar, whatever it might be, are good tools to allow you to train more often or train more volume or perhaps lift your competition squat. But until you're efficient at the squat, we don't need to uh, force those in. Uh, from this angle, you can see your low back might be a little bit too curved, so it'd work on pulling that rib cage down, making yourself nice and square in your midsection, uh, again, dealing with tightness. And then I wouldn't do the competition squat and the pause squat in the same set it might have just been tired and you might have just um you know a little bit of mental lapse but i'd really focus on that pacing again controlling yourself on the way down hitting that hole and exploding on up you got a little bit of work to do a little bit of homework my friend but i got faith i got faith and you got a friend in me buzz light uh just take your time and get after it <laughs> okay 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 we got a pretty good looking squat right here, if I do say so myself. You can tell with a little bit more narrow stance there, he doesn't have a lot of issues controlling his knee, which was something I was mentioning before. Sometimes people try to squat a little bit too wide for their mobility or frame, and I feel like um, they're focusing too much on keeping those knees out, whereas they could just move their stance in, and that knee will naturally track a little bit more of their foot, their uh, midfoot and allow them to be a little bit stronger and not focus as much on that stability. Stability is key. You can't really transfer force without it, but if you're trying to squat beyond your leverages, it's going to be very, very difficult, or lift in general. Overall, man, I'd say that squat was super clean. Again, you might be a little, be a little bit more aggressive going into the hole, but your general form is really solid. Same with my man right here. Can't really see your depth or your lower body, but it looks pretty good. One thing I would say is I would try to slow down uh, in between reps. Even if you have a set of eight, 10, even 12 if your coach really hates you or you're trying to get mega jacked. What we want to do is focus on each rep being similar, if not the exact same as the one before, and in which case I think of 10 reps as 10 singles just really close together. So that real, that first one was real clean. Take your time, re-brace, another big breath, and do the other. Um, you know, I think you see a lot of bodybuilders from the 90s and whatever, and they're throwing around 315, 405, maybe even 495 with constant tension over and over. I think that that just allows you to be a little bit sloppier when it comes to one rep maxes or even heavier loads. And two, the mental lapse of getting tight uh, isn't there. So I would try to really focus on 
the singles. All my single ladies, all my single ladies, all my single ladies. You guys are welcome. Uh, my man here, hips are a little low. So uh, sometimes, uh, you know, getting your back flat is one of the most difficult things in the deadlift. And the easiest fix for a majority of people is to get those hips a little bit higher. So um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in front of the bar more. What it means is flatten that back out, get your hips about two inches higher, shins a hair more vertical, and then get your body weight falling backwards. Um, oftentimes, also what I found is people's belts are on too tight when your belts on too tight you can't actually breathe into it and brace properly and that also can cause some back rounding uh, people think the belt is doing the work but the you have to do more work the belts just a tool there to help you breathe into it so make sure you can kind of fit a couple fingers in between your stomach and the belt before you breathe then feel it out with your stomach sides and low back pushing into the belt Hips a hair higher, uh, and that'll be a really clean deadlift, man. Overall, really solid. Um, we just got to fix that hair of low back rounding. Um, one, potential injury down uh, long term. Two, you're not taking full advantage of your hamstrings and glutes. And a three, under heavier loads, 90 95%, 100%, or when you go for new PRs, you're going to get around an inch or two above your knee and be too curled in the low back to lock that thing out. We want to be able to have our low back flat so we can just push those hips through nice and easy. Again, I've talked about it many a time. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the touch and go deadlift. I think there's a very, very few cases where you should actually train that way for the majority of people. And I know some comments, well, strong man, you can do touch and go and CrossFit, you can do touch and go. And I just like doing touch and go because I like it. Well, that's fine. You can do whatever you want by any means, all my friends there in the comments. But... Typically, I would like to train a little bit harder than uh, possible. So even if you're doing strongman CrossFit or, or, or touch-and-go deadlift competition, if you do dead stop, you're just going to be that much more efficient and easier to do touch-and-go. So I would recommend um, repeating again, trying to get perfect singles, although you're doing a set of 5, 8, 12, whatever. You're going to be doing 5 perfect singles or 10 perfect singles, and in no time, You'll get into a better position over time. You'll produce more force because you're coming from a dead stop and more force, more actual strength, more power does equal more muscles. And who doesn't want to be have more muscles and also lift more weight? I mean, that's the goal here, right, ladies and gentlemen? And because of that touch and go, your uh, starting position is inconsistent. The barbell moving in, is inconsistent, even though this gentleman right here is pretty good at them. Generally speaking, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but what I would say, my man, is that first single is really the only one I could judge by. Overall, it is really, really good. Um, hips seem in a good place. Low back seems in a good place. You are using straps, which again, depending on what you compete in or your goals, may not be the best idea. But considering that, you get in a really good place. Uh, I do think you can get a little bit tighter in your upper back and lats. It looks like you're arms are just kind of hanging so really try to pull that bar into you flexing your lats and get those elbows pointed backwards think about bending that bar around you okay sumo time i kind of like it i kind of like it going beltless he's got the tank top on letting the triceps out letting them breathe they need oxygen too uh overall man Sumo form looks really, really good. I like the patience off the ground. Knees are in a good place right over the midfoot, not going too wide for your mobility. Back gets in a really good position. Head in a good position. Pulling the slack out and tension out of the body. A1 sumo form. Ladies and gentlemen, do your boy a favor. Give it a thumbs up. Let's see if we can get to 1K thumbs up. Subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Salam Mike. I'm out. Appreciate you guys.